Well, what's up, everybody? Hopefully the sound is okay. And I'm going to mute while playing the video, so hopefully there's no echo. And I'm sorry for the random time um, and the time moving all around because when this stuff came up and a ton of people tagged me, this is wild, totally unexpected. I am pretty shocked. There may be some reasons why this happened that we could have seen coming, but Richard Allen's attorneys withdrawing, the judge allowing them to withdraw. Because if you remember, we've had cases and you know we've had cases and we've seen cases and lawyers try to withdraw and the judge doesn't let them withdraw. And um, usually it happens because it's so close to trial that it would be so unfair for, uh, for the criminal defendant to have a new lawyer on the case and have a new lawyer try to catch up and prep for trial in such a short time and judges won't let attorneys withdraw. Well, that's not happening here. The judge already let one attorney withdraw and the other one just orally. And the other one is filing a motion now in writing to withdraw. Let's hear from the judge. And then we're going to go through what this means. I'm going to answer as many of your questions. I'm, I'm in the civil rules committee meeting right now. We just took our break. I was trying to time up when our break was going to be taken. Um, so I've got about 10 or 15 minutes here for us to watch this video together of what happened in court today and talk about what it means that Richard Allen's attorneys have quit the same attorneys that filed scathing motions with crazy conspiracy theories that seem to have a lot of weight and evidence backing them that could seriously affect the strategy and way this case is handled, litigated, defended, tried. It's absolutely wild. And I know somebody tagged me on Twitter. They're like, for the 575th time, Peter's going to tell us this is very unusual, very unusual. So we're going to talk about why we're going to talk about how it's going to affect it. We're going to answer all of your questions, but first let's watch what the judge had to say at the hearing today that was supposed to happen at two o'clock, got kicked back to two 30 and then ended up getting canceled altogether. It's only three minutes here. So not a touch, the not a ton. The judge is going to say, but let's listen to what she has to say. We on? All right, we are on the record in State of Indiana versus Richard Allen, 08 C01 2210 MR1. Thank you for your patience, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. McClellan, Mr. Luttrell, for your patience. Um, we've had an unexpected turn of events, ladies and gentlemen. Um, earlier this afternoon, the defense attorney. So interesting, I'll just pause it there because she said an unexpected turn of, of events. I've seen some reports of people saying she was going to boot one of the defense attorneys. She was going to remove him from the case with some connection to what happened with some evidence leaks and crime scene photos and things like that. Um, you know, one of them, one of the people accused or involved in that um, has already met his demise. Other ones are being investigated, but there were some reports that she booted one of these attorneys, which would just be weird because she didn't say she didn't boot him, but she did say it's an unexpected turn of events. Well, if she knew they were going to be removed and obviously all this was going to get continued, I don't think it would be unexpected by her. We don't know if they leaked the evidence, Polycare. There have been reports of that or at least that it was on their watch or their mistake or something like that, but we don't really know as far as I'm concerned. These have withdrawn their representation of Mr. Allen. Mr. Baldwin made an oral motion to withdraw. I granted that oral motion to withdraw and Mr. Rosie will be submitting a written motion to withdraw I'm assuming within the next couple of days. Um, they have confirmed with the court that Mr. Allen's uh, financial situation remains static, meaning he is continuing to be entitled to a, appointed counsel. I will reach out to public defenders to make that appointment. Um, as Mr. Allen is now without counsel, I've ordered him transported back to the Department of Correction. So without counsel means nothing can really happen in this case. No decisions, no discovery, no depositions, no continued continuing to dig um, because those, those theories were absolutely out there with the Odinism and the Department of Corrections and the people in this cult going as, as high up in different positions in law enforcement and investigators and maybe even in the the courtroom and, you know, all these problems going on and how the crime scene photos show that it was set up a certain way and accusing other potential defendants of who did this with their Facebook posts and things like that. A lot of information, a lot of digging, a lot of investigation that still had to happen. Guess what? If the new attorneys don't agree with that, that all just goes away and we may never hear about it again. Number two, 
if the new attorneys are too lazy to fight that battle, it goes away. And that's going to leave questions for everybody in the world about did Richard Allen do this? Did Richard Allen, was he taken, was he railroaded by this cult and by law enforcement and by the Department of Corrections? If these arguments go away, major questions are going to last forever. Hopefully not to, for the victims' families because that's no justice at all to wonder if you had the right guy. And if these attorneys now go away and new attorneys come on, will they have the same access to the witnesses and documents that the old team had? Now, assuming the, the old team of defense attorneys, I believe it based on their motions that they believe this and they do want to help him, which just makes this wild as to why they would withdraw. But I do believe they are going to turn over everything they have. But you heard how difficult it was for them to get in contact with these witnesses to try and gather up old police documents. This case is years and years old. And now we have to hit the reset button yet again, as far as the defense is concerned. So will the new attorneys be able to access the same witnesses? Will those witnesses feel comfortable talking with those attorneys or is something going on in the background we don't know about? Are threats being made? What is going on? Criminal investigations, potentially, that people don't want to get involved in. Will that create roadblocks for the new set of attorneys that haven't built the relationship and trust with these witnesses that are providing them documents and information throughout this process? It's really sad if all this falls apart because of something that happened outside of their control. Mr. McClellan, I know that we have already scheduled a hearing in the Carroll Circuit Court October 31st at 9 a.m. I'd like to maintain that hearing if we can, please. Um, I think at that point, um, we can have counsel appointed. Um, I'd like to set a new trial date, obviously. I don't believe counsel will be prepared within the next couple of months to try a case of this magnitude in January. Um, so we'll set dates for the trial. I think we need to set a date as well for the suppression hearing that was filed now by former counsel. So as you can hear, new lawyers coming on the case. What does that mean? Everything is delayed. Everything is delayed, including the trial that was supposed to go in January. The former counsel filed motions to suppress. Those are supposed to go to hearing. Guess what? We'll see if new counsel thinks the same thing. He's going to have new counsels appointed. Um, it's just really strange. Uh, Luna asked, why do we have to wonder whether he did it if he already confessed? There is so much around that confession that could potentially raise doubts about it. Will those arguments be made? I don't know. I don't know. There are competency issues. There are, you know, um, allegations that there was some coercion or threats made by Odinist, you know, correctional officers. But again, that stuff has to be fleshed out and proven. Uh, Shauna B. I bet it would be hard to represent someone accused of such a heinous crime. Why do you think they are quitting? Maybe learn too much from Alan. Highly, highly doubtful. Even if you would have confessed it to them, these criminal defense lawyers, like most criminal defense lawyers, are not afraid of having a hated client. They're not afraid of going and representing somebody that people hate. Uh, and a lot of criminal defense attorneys still will even represent a guilty client to make sure that the state can prove the case beyond a reasonable doubt, to make sure that the investigation was done appropriately. I'm not saying that's what happened in this case, but from my perspective, that is absolutely not the reason that they withdrew because it was too hard to represent somebody uh, accused of such a heinous crime. That, that I... I would be shocked if that was the reason. I shouldn't say it's impossible, but I would be shocked if that was the reason. Um, but as you can see, new counsel is going to be appointed by the end of October. We're going to have to set new trial dates and new hearing dates. I have asked the attorneys um, to provide all of the discovery previously provided to back to the state of Indiana. I know I entered a protective order on the discovery, and honestly, I don't remember when that was. I think it was in April of this year, perhaps, maybe sooner. But the attorneys have been ordered to provide all of that discovery back to the state. And if you would maintain that until such time as it can be turned over to successor counsel, I would appreciate that, Mr. McClellan. Um, I've also asked the defense attorneys to um, cooperate with successor counsel. They're not required to do that, but I think that they will in the best interests of um, Mr. Allen. They're not required to provide any of their work product. Um, but they will be required and have indicated that they will cooperate with successor counsel. 
So obviously without counsel, Mr. Allen's hearing cannot proceed. I apologize that I know many of you have been waiting for several hours. I know Mr. McClellan, you and your staff, and you had some witnesses here um, that came earlier to have the hearing, but clearly this is outside of our control. So is there anything, Mr. And again, outside of their control. So this is an interesting question by Complex Lick. Can a judge fire an attorney for the defense? So it depends, court-appointed attorney sometimes. If attorneys are acting badly and violating court orders, that is a sanction potentially to boot them off of the case. It's very interesting because you're right. They would get into the defendant's Sixth Amendment right to counsel. Um, but again, if it's an appointed attorney and they can appoint a different attorney because this one is you know, breaking the law or violating court orders, then it is possible for a judge to remove an attorney from a case, although it is unlikely, which again, those are the reports I never really thought there was too much weight in those, especially. And now she says that this was unexpected. Um, Nirvana resigned for leaking photos. Those are some of the reports. I don't know. We don't know the reason that they resigned. People are also asking, did they resign to get uh, to delay? Highly doubted. This delay is not going to help Richard Allen. Um, they, they had a theory that they were working. If they filed a motion to continue, they could have gotten a continuance. It's not that hard for criminal defendants to get continuances. Because we want to make sure it's a fair trial, level playing field. Judges normally grant continuances for criminal defendants as long as they have a legitimate reason for them. A bunch of people asking this question. Becky, what happens to speedy trial rights when this happens? Mama rocks. What about speedy trial? Well, my guess is Richard Allen has already waived his right to a speedy trial. I don't know, though. Um, I don't remember if that's something that's happened or not. But if he is demanded speedy trial, this would not change that. He would still need to have his case tried within a speedy trial period. Highly doubtful at this point that he hasn't waived speedy trial. I think he did. I'm not positive, though. Um, I'm sure you guys can let me know in the chat if he hasn't yet. Uh, Carrie D., Peter, do you think these lawyers tank their careers? I don't think so, but I don't know. I don't know the reason. I don't know if they did leak the photos and it was just a bad call by them. I, I don't know. A lot of just withdrawing from a case like this is not going to tank their careers. No. Mr. McClellan, that you'd like to state for the record. No, Your Honor, I think we can address the other issues at the October 31st court date. All right. With that being said, then, we are in recess. Thank you. I'll see you in October. All right. So that's it. That's what we got from the hearing today. Um, people are also asking in here, like, Beach, will we? Will they be, give a, a, be required to give a reason for quitting? Well, it sounds like one of them did orally, and we didn't get to see it with the cameras. The other one's probably going to do it in writing. I don't know if we're going to see it. Usually lawyers are vague in their motions to withdraw. We saw it in the Sarah Boone case. Um, so, I mean, it is it is really wild. And I feel, I know nobody's going to feel bad for Richard Allen, but I feel bad for any criminal defendant put in this place where this much shade is going on on the outside, outside of his control. If he did it and he's sitting in prison rotting, that's where he's going to end up being anyway. So it's no harm, no foul. Um, but if he didn't do it, brutal. And because he's still cloaked in the presumption of innocence, that's pretty just terrible to think um, that that this can happen to somebody. Um, K, K. Metzger said, just got your quick update. Richard Allen attorneys withdrew. Um, everything is delayed, including the trial. We don't know why they withdrew and they're going to have to appoint new counsel. And uh, this creates serious issues from all of the theories and allegations that they've made prior. And it's in public record filed in the court doc docket um, so everybody knows, and we've seen and read those allegations. They're pointing the finger at multiple other people. They're saying there were problems with the investigation. They're blaming on an Odin Odinist cult, saying law enforcement basically disregarded that and that this cult ties could rise up in law enforcement and be part of the problem. All of that could go away. That's the wildest thing to me. If the new set of attorneys, and it's not unusual, we saw uh, Bankowitz come into Sarah Boone's case and come up with a completely new defense, battered spouse syndrome, and now they're going to look for a new expert. That could absolutely happen in this case where they're like, you know what? All of that is hogwash. We read through the discovery. We don't find it to be credible at all. And, you know, therefore we're going to go a completely different way. What would you think if that happened? I mean, I, I would, I would, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, theorist myself, but it would be really hard for me to just forget about that and think it held no water after Again, what, what really pulled me in was the former law enforcement officers that were involved and said, definitely one person could not have committed this crime. The other entire file that a few law enforcement officers dug into thinking that there were Odin um, connections to this. And there was this entire file and they're still willing to testify that there was a lot more evidence of that 
than it could have been one man and that one man being Richard Allen. And again, the saddest part of all of this is, is always the victims and their families. Are they going to doubt? Are they going to believe it? Are they going to feel like they got justice? Polycare, quick thanks for doing this on your break. Thank you guys so much. And, and share this video with anybody else you see posting, having questions about this, because I couldn't answer everybody's DMs and things on Twitter. I'm going to share this on my Twitter and Instagram. Um, but I appreciate you guys joining me. I do have to get back to the meeting. I'm already three minutes late from when we were supposed to be back. So I'm going to get back into my committee meeting. Thanks everybody for joining me. Hit that like button. I don't think I said it. Everybody hit the like button. Um, so this can get out on the algorithm to everybody that has these questions. Cause I wanted to answer them. Of course, like I always like doing for you guys when something wild like this happens. Thanks for joining me. I'm out of here until next time. Thanks for watching another episode of The Lawyer You Know. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit the thumbs up and share with your friends who might be interested here on YouTube. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. You can also follow us on all social media, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, at Lawyer You Know. But on Instagram, we are still at Tragos Law. So look us up on there. And don't forget to listen to The Lawyer You Know podcast, available on all major podcast platforms. If you have a case you want to talk to us about, if it's a personal injury case, wrongful death, catastrophic injury, car accident, or slip and fall case, please email us lawyer, you know, at gmail.com. Of course, all of these links I just mentioned are included in the description below on this episode and every episode. So until next time, this is Peter Tragos, the lawyer, you know.